Hi, welcome to Chris Parkin Shooting Sports. We've got a bit of an impromptu video today. I've got a Savage A22 semi-auto 22 rimfire. Thank you very much to Edgar Brothers for sending me this rifle. I'll have to say bleep there because the YouTube don't like us giving out prices. I'm going to test it today uh, just on the 50 meter range, get it zeroed. I've got a Schmidt & Bender PM2 525 rifle scope, which to be fair is quite a lot of uh, scope for this rifle. But you know, I've got it sitting around so I may as well get the use out of it. Semi-auto. 10 round, detachable magazine, bolt stops on the underside here, and semi-auto with safety catch, push through there, safe dry firing, it's got a centre blade trigger like this, so one squeeze, click. It's actually a rapid cycling gun, uh, you'll see from the video I'm going to round up immediately. It's a rapid cycling gun, it's a 22, 22 inch barrel so you get quite, uh, quite good velocity but most importantly good sound reduction and it's also got a moderator on it so I've been having some good fun with this today. Um, the stock I think is a Boyd, it's a laminate but it's got a nice black stippled finish on it for what I could say is a very good looking rifle. Nice butt pad on the back nice and firm, it's not too thick, not too squidgy, it uh, grips well on your shoulder because it's got good uh, good checkering on it and so the texture on the so stock is excellent. I'll do a few little close-up videos because it's got good butt hook here and plenty of flat underside for a rear bag. Front end has got a sling stud and I've put my usual Harris bipod on it so it's going to be an easy peasy quick impromptu video let's see how it goes because I've Zeroed at 50 meters and I've now reset my turrets. So I've got, hopefully, for some long range shooting, about 10 milliradians, 10 and a half milliradians, which is going to get me probably just beyond 200 meters. That's for later in the week when the weather's a bit better and the wind has died down. But so far, so good. I'm very happy with the Savage. See you later. Magazine loading was pretty simple once you got the go with it. The SK ammo is quite greasy though, so you do get slippery fingers. The bolt cycling lever is really cool, it's easy to get hold of, but just remember the last round doesn't hold open so you'll get a dead man's click if you get to 11 shots. I love the head position on this rifle with a comfortable cheek piece and the brilliant length of pull on the stock allowing me to load the bipod. It was like shooting one of my centrifires, although I think in fairness I might move the scope another step forward on the Picatinny rail. I didn't get a single misfire or cycling through the test, so I've got to say the feed and performance of this semi-auto action is really reliable. You can see ejection is pretty snappy as well. Tested some Winchester 40 grain subsonics, they're okay, but I think I moved on to the SK, they were better. Lockdown still prevails and I haven't got loads of ammo yet, but thankfully the SK Standard Plus has been pretty reliable in most of my guns. It's not a great ballistic performer like most rimfires are, and if you have the time, energy, effort and finance, it's well worth experimenting with all ammunition types, because rimfire is great, it's quiet, it's very non-disturbing, so, you know, go with it.
Here you can see the safety catch which slots through at the top front of the trigger guard and also the bolt release catch in front. Final pull weight on the trigger isn't at all bad, it's just a shame about the creep in between the first and second stages which is effectively what the safety blade gives you. Generous dimensions on the stock are what made it really nice to shoot. There's a good vertical pistol grip, a slender comb and a 14 inch or 355mm length of pull. The butt hook is great because you can clamp the gun into your shoulder or run it on a rear bag for great elevation support. It's especially important to note that the forend is stiff and that the free float remains in all circumstances. That's especially important when you've got a nice full length stock where you can apply your regular loading of the bipod just like on a bigger centerfire rifle. Rifle zeroed at 50 metres now, so I'm just setting up the turrets for longer range dialing. You'd think a 10 shot semi-auto would be just a short range plinker, but today I've been playing out to uh, 250 metres with it. I've got a Schmitten Bender PM2 up on top, it's given me plenty of dialing capability. Not quite as much I would have liked, but in the breezy conditions at 200 metres alone, you realise why 2 2 rimfire is a testing gun to shoot at that distance. Um, I'm just a shooter, I'm just a plinker like any man, so I'm not going to say I'm shooting great groups, but I'll get around to making the video later today and we've got to on target cam and a shooter cam, a bit of closing on the trigger, some slow motion as well. So uh, let's see how it goes, because today I've just been filming it with my iPhone, so uh, enjoy. I'm never going to claim to be the greatest shot or the person who puts the most ammunition to test. So you know, if you get the gun, feel free to test it. The point is I test the fundamentals of how the gun works. Like most rimfires, if I seriously wanted to get into long range shooting, I'd probably use a canted rail with 20 MOA Picatinny underneath the scope, or a one piece mount like a tier one uni mount, which has got 20 MOA built into it, or even rings with, with, with elevation built in. You can see ejection is fast and snappy, and this is pretty quiet subsonic ammunition, so it doesn't need high velocity fodder to get the best out of the rifle. If the Savage has a weak spot, it's definitely the trigger. It says it's adjustable, but it's only adjustable for weight. You've got no adjustable pull or anything like that. It does have quite a lot of creep, so watch the video closely and you'll start to pick up the secondary noises, the secondary movement in the stage between the silver blade getting pulled all the way in and the final squeeze through the break point. Watch this a little bit carefully now. You can see that slight creep in the trigger. Again, this was a fairly impromptu, lightweight video, but you know what? It's the real world, and it's a breezy day, but great fun shooting, and I did a walk back all the way from about 50 metres to 200 metres, testing some drops and the dialing capability. I had loads of spots sprayed on the target, so I was just plinking away, and with plenty of ammunition, I got to practice aim-offs, dial-offs, and checking about what was going on with the wind in terms of vertical bump and vertical spread of the velocity as well. I'm not an obsessive group shooter, and once the gun's proven on paper and I have decent velocity figures to run some ballistics, all I want to do is shoot some steel and just plink. Here you can see a basic starting point for the ballistics using JBM ballistics software just on my iPhone. I didn't bother taking the Kestrel or the Garmin Fortrex or anything out with me today. I'm clearly running out of yellow paint.
And no, I'm not going to edit out the shots that missed by miles. There's only one thing to do with an empty paint can. So, to sum up about the uh, Savage A22 Pro Varmint, what do I like about it? I like the fact it's a 10 round semi-auto, it's very reliable on feed with either subsonic or high velocity ammo, but I always use subsonic. 22 and a half inch barrel makes it very quiet with great sound moderator added on a half inch UNF thread. Comes with a Picatinny rail which makes scope changes easy and the board laminate stock, it's got true free floating barrel and it's got a really nice ergonomic layout for shooting prone or positional which is great when you want to actually try and put some better rounds on target. In terms of the action itself, the trigger and the barrel, well, barrel seems great, action is great, very easy to use, very easy, easy controls, the magazine feeds and loads well. The downside really to the gun is the trigger in one word. It's such a shame that although it says adjustable, it's only weight adjustable and you can't get rid of that creep between the centre blade getting fully squeezed in and this break point of the trigger. Other than that, I like the Savage. I spent a lot of time shooting it, nice sunny day, lots of rounds plinking onto steel and again, it's 2-2 rimfire, just great fun to shoot. So little noise, no disturbance and you can play about with all the things you want to do with your centrefire rifles and centrefire ammo at real longer ranges, which is far more expensive than 6 or 7 pence a shot. Hope you've enjoyed watching, please like and subscribe if you want to see more videos. I'm always playing with different formats and this has been a little bit more of a relaxed video less detail, less technical, um, and I hope you've enjoyed it. So, see you later. Bye.